In this video, you're going to learn how to solve systems of three variables, three equations, and we're going to go through three different examples together. So let's dive into this first example. So we're given these three equations and we're going to find out the common point of intersection, what makes the three equations true. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by picking a variable to eliminate. You can eliminate either the x's, the y's, or the z's. Now when you pick a variable, stick with that variable and you'll understand what I mean in just a second. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at this first and second equation. Now you can combine the first and second, the first and third, the second and third, but you want to pick a variable to eliminate. And I'm going to go with the z's. I think that's going to be the easiest in this problem. But notice how we have one z here and negative two z here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top equation. I'm going to multiply the entire thing by two. This way we'll have two z. When I add it to this equation with negative two z, the z's are going to cancel out. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna write over here, I'm gonna say times two, that's gonna give us four x minus two y plus two z equals 10. One mistake that students sometimes make is they don't multiply the left and right sides, they just do the left side. But you wanna make sure you do it to both sides. This equation we're gonna keep the same, so I'll just write that here, x plus three y minus two z equals negative six. And now I'm just gonna add straight down. You see how those z's cancel? So we're gonna get four x plus one x is five x. Negative two y plus three y is one y. The z's cancel, 10 plus negative six is four. Now, you wanna stick with the z's. Remember we decided we're gonna eliminate the z's. We use the first and second equation. We have to use that third equation, okay? So do we wanna combine the third with the second or the third with the first? But we have to use this third equation. Let's go ahead and combine it with the second one. If I multiply this equation by two, we'll have two z, and I can add it to the middle equation, negative two z, and the z's will cancel. So I'm just gonna write these equations right here. We've got x plus three y minus two z equals negative six. That one stayed the same. This equation we're gonna multiply by uh, two. Okay, so that's gonna give us eight x plus two y plus two z equals 10. Now when we add straight down, those z's are gonna cancel. We get one x plus eight x is nine x, three y plus two y is five y, and negative six plus 10 is four. Okay, now it's interesting, we're down to two equations that have two variables, x and y. So we have to now pick a variable to eliminate, either the x's or the y's. I think it's gonna be easier to eliminate the y's, all we would have to do is multiply this equation by negative five, that'll give us negative five y, positive five y, those y's will cancel when we add the two equations together. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna say, here I'll just put a little note here, times negative five, so that's gonna be negative 25x minus five y equals negative 20. You wanna make sure you multiply the whole equation. Now when we add straight down, and see how the y's are gonna cancel. This is gonna give us negative 16x equals negative 16. And if we divide both sides by negative 16, we can see that x is coming out to one. Now notice what happened. We went from three variables, three equations, down to two variables, two equations, down to one variable, one equation. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go backwards from the one variable, one equation to the two variable, Okay, one of these equations, then back to the three variable equations. So if we take one, I'm just gonna put it into, let's see, I'll put it into this one right here. So it's five times x, which is one, plus y equals four. So that's five plus y equals four. Subtract five from both sides, y equals negative one. Okay, so now we have x and y, we just need z. You can put it to any one of these equations, you'll get the same answer. I'm gonna put it into this top equation and Let's go ahead and do that. So we have two times x, which is one, minus y, which is negative one, plus z, which we don't know yet, is equal to five. Okay, so let's simplify now. We've got, let's see, two, a negative times a negative is a positive one. We've got three plus z equals five. I'll just put that up here. And if we subtract three from both sides, we get z equals two. Okay, now we have x, y, and z. What you wanna do is you wanna write it in alphabetical order as a triple, x comma y comma z. And this case is gonna be one for x, negative one for y, and two for z. And that's our solution. If you wanna check your answer, you can take these 
x, y, and z values, put them into each equation, and you should get 5, negative 6 for the second one, and 5 for the third one. And if it makes all the equations true, you know this is the common point of intersection. So let's take a look at another example. Okay, if you're getting the hang of this so far, why don't you try this uh, second example, and we'll go over it together. So for number two, now we've got these three equations. You need to decide what variable you want to eliminate first, either the x's, the y's, or the z's. Sometimes one's easier than another, but you can't really make a mistake by which variable you pick. It's just a convenience. So here, I think what might be easier would be work with the y's. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this first and third equation together because the negative 1y and the positive 1y, when I add those equations together, the y's are going to cancel. Now, some questions that you might have at this point in the video is, Mario, can we subtract equations or do we always have to add them? You can subtract the equations, but I find that adding is a little bit easier. And if you have to, you can always multiply an equation by negative 1 so that one of the values is positive, one is negative, and then when you add, they, they cancel out. But you can subtract them if you prefer that. But I like to just add them. So let's go ahead and diagram this out a little bit. So when we add 5x plus 2x, we get 7x. Negative y plus 1y, that cancels. 1z plus negative 2z is negative 1z, okay? And 14 plus negative 3 is equal to 11. Now notice we use the first and third equation. We have to use the second equation, okay? Very important. But you can combine the second equation with the first or the second equation with the third. But again, we have to use the second equation. Now the question is, and this is where students go off the track, is remember, you have to stick with the variable that you decided you were going to eliminate first. We decided we're going to work with the y's, so we need to eliminate the y's. I'm going to combine it with this first equation. I can see that if I multiply this first equation by 2, that'll give us negative 2y. When I add it to the second equation, positive 2y, bada boom, bada bing, they cancel out, right? Okay, so let's do that. We're going to multiply this guy by 2, so we get 10x minus 2y plus 2z equals 28, right? This guy, we're going to keep the same, x plus 2y plus 3z equals 9. And if we add straight down, 10x plus, remember this is understood to be a 1 here, 1x is 11x, y's cancel, 2z plus 3z is 5z, and 28 plus 9 is 37. You know, the biggest thing that happens with students when they're doing these problems is they make little arithmetic mistakes. So if you need to use a calculator or do some of the work off to the side and then bring it back, whatever it takes to be very accurate. The other uh, tip or technique that you might want to do is label the equations. You might want to say this is equation 1, 2, 3. And then when you're working with them, you can kind of keep track. Oh, I'm combining first and second equation. Oh, I need to use my third equation or, you know, something like that to keep it more organized. Sometimes I like to draw arrows. Um, but you want to make sure you use all three equations, especially at this first part of the uh, process. Once you get down to the two variables, two equations, now we're on easy street, right? You're used to doing this from earlier in math, solving using either substitution or elimination or graphing. But let's stick with the elimination method. And I think the easiest thing to, uh, to work with would be the z's now. All I'd have to do is multiply this equation by 5. That would give us negative 5z. When I add to this one positive 5z, they're going to cancel out, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just put a little note here, times 5. That's going to give us 35x uh, minus 5z is equal to 11 times 5, 55. Add straight down. Those z's are going to cancel. 11 plus 35 is 46x is equal to 92. Divide both sides by 46, and x is coming out to 2. Okay, now what we're going to do is we went from three variables, three equations, to two variables, two equations, one variable, one equation. We want to work our way back. So I'm going to put the two either in here or in here and solve for z. I'll just do uh, this one right here. So I'm going to do 11 times x, which is 2, plus 5z. I like to put a little line through my z so I don't think it's a 2 or something else, okay? And then let's simplify. So we have 22 plus 5z. Uh, equals 37, subtract 22 from both sides, 5z equals 15, divide both sides by 5, and you can see z is equal to 3. Okay, now we have x and z, we need to solve for y. So we go back to the three variable, three equations. You can use any one, whichever one you want. Of course, you want to make it easy on yourself. I'd probably pick this one because we just have a 1 as a coefficient in front of the y. 
So let's go ahead and do that. We've got 2 times x, which is 2, plus y, which we don't know yet, minus 2z, which z is 3, is equal to negative 3. Okay, so now let's simplify. We have 4 plus y minus 6 equals negative 3. A 4 plus negative 6 is a negative 2. Add 2 to both sides. y is equal to negative 1. Now we want to write our answer in alphabetical order, x, y, z. So that's going to be x is 2, y is negative 1, z is 3. That's our solution. Now, you're probably saying, Mario, what does this really mean, right? These are called linear equations. The reason they're called linear equations, you see how the exponent is to the first power? But if you were to graph these, they actually form like a flat surface, like a plane. And so what we're doing is we're figuring out where these three flat surfaces, these three planes, like where they intersect, like what point do they all cross at? This is the point. If you put it back into each of these equations, you should get 14, 9, and negative 3. It should make them all true, and that's the common point of intersection. So let's look at one more example together, see if you can do this one, and we'll go through it together. Okay, while you're working through this problem, I want to let you know about my two video courses for sale. I'll have links in the description below. One is an Algebra 1 uh, video course, and the other one's an Algebra 2 slash College Algebra. I go through the important concepts that you would cover in those classes in order, kind of building on one another, and I show you how to uh, approach these uh, problems. I talk about the concepts, I talk about some examples, and I give you some examples that you can practice on your own. So if you want to go deeper in your learning with me, those courses are a good resource and uh, affordably priced. Now, if you've been following me for some time and maybe you just can't afford the courses, you can always go to my Myers Math Tutoring YouTube channel. I've got over a thousand videos now on my channel, and I try to make learning math a lot less stressful and more efficient. And I try to explain over all the years that I've been working with students, the little pitfalls that students have and how to you know, get over those uh, more easily. So check out the channel, uh, and I'll look forward to seeing you in those videos. But let's look at number three now. So what do we want to do here? We want to eliminate one of the variables. Either the x is the y's or the z's. And you can't really make a mistake, but you can make a choice that's going to make it a little bit easier or quicker. So I think in this example, it looks like the x's might be a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to add the first and second equation together. Okay, and if I do that, 1x plus negative 1x is 0. Those will cancel out, right? So let's do that. So these cancel. 1y plus negative 2y is negative 1y. 1z plus 3z is 4z. Remember, if there's not a coefficient, it's understood to be 1. And we want to make sure we also add the right sides. 2 plus negative 6 is negative 4. Okay, let's just circle that. That's one of our two variable equations. We didn't use equation number 3. We have to use that one, right? We either can combine it with the second or with the first. I'm going to combine it with the second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this whole equation by 2. This will give us negative 2x plus positive 2x those x's are going to cancel, right? So let me just write it right down here. So this would be negative 2x minus 4y plus 6z equals 2 times negative 6, which is negative 12. We're combining these together. X's cancel. 3y plus negative 4y is negative 1y. 6z plus negative 4z is 2z. And negative 12 plus 10 is negative 2. Okay, now we're back to what we're familiar with, which is the two-variable system, where you have two variables, two equations. What variable should we eliminate, the y's or the z's? Again, you can't make a mistake, but you could make an easier choice. In this case, it looks like the y's might be easier, but I think if we multiply this equation by negative 1, that'll make this a positive y, negative 2z, positive 2. All the signs flip when you multiply by negative 1. Let's bring this equation down. And now you can see when we add straight down, the 1y and negative 1y are going to cancel. Negative 2z plus 4z is 2z, and 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. Divide both sides by 2, z equals negative 1. And now we're going to do our back substitution, working our way back to the second, uh, the two variable equations and then the three variable equations. So I'm going to put this negative 1 right here. So we have negative y plus 2 times z, which is negative 1 equals negative 2. Simplify a little bit. Add 2 to both sides. Negative y equals 0. Divide both sides by negative 1 to get positive y 
course, 0 divided by negative 1 is still 0. Now we're down to y and z. We just have to solve for x. So let's go back to any one of the three variable equations. I think I'll use this first one. It looks like that'll be easy because we just have a coefficient of 1x plus y, which is 0, plus z, which is negative 1, equals 2. So we have x plus negative 1 equals 2. Add 1 to both sides. So x equals 3. And now let's put it in alphabetical order. We have 3 comma 0 comma negative 1. Again, remember, you can check your answer by putting it into all three equations, see if it makes all three equations true. If it does, you know you've got a good uh, solution there. And if you want more practice, you know, if you want to test yourself and do some more problems, I'll put a link to another video that I did on this exact same topic, working with three variables, three equations. Follow me over to that video. We'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.